Okay, listen. Calorimetry. A calorimeter is a cup. Okay? Um, it's an insulated cup that supposedly doesn't let any heat in or out. And so we use calorimetry to study the temperature change between things within that cup. So it's kind of like a closed system. And we put something in there that's hot and something in there that's cold, and we predict the final temperature when they come to equilibrium. Now, because they have different specific heats, they don't just meet in the middle. Like if I drop a 100 degree Celsius piece of aluminum in some zero degree water, it doesn't just meet at 50, because they have different masses. But even if they had the same mass, they have different specific heats. Okay, so we're going to look at how much heat each one loses and gains, and it's still just Q equals MC delta T, but it's, it's using that with conservation of energy. So what I'm saying is Q lost and Q gained have to equal zero when we add them together, because let's say I drop a piece of aluminum in water, like I said. The aluminum's hot, the water's cold. Well, which one loses heat? The aluminum loses the heat, the water gains the heat. There wasn't any new heat created or any heat destroyed within that calorimeter, just some heat change from one to the other, move from one of the objects to the other. Okay? So, the amount of heat that was lost by the aluminum has to equal the amount of heat gained by the water, but we'll call Q loss negative, Q gain positive, okay? So basically you could say that your Q gained is equal to negative Q lost, okay? Now, the way they do that is with MC delta T, okay, MC delta T is equal to negative MC delta T. Sometimes there will be more than two different things. Sometimes you'll be dropping four or five things into that cup, okay, but Q equals MC delta T tells you... Um, for each one, you would have, let's say I had some water and a piece of lead and a piece of aluminum. Both the lead and the aluminum are hot. They would both be losing heat. So I would have two on the loss side. Q equals MC delta T for the aluminum plus Q equals MC delta T for the lead. Now I say plus, but it's on the negative side. So it would be minus both of them. But we take care of that a different way. Remember that delta T could be like T minus T naught, final T minus original T, right? Well, the way that your book deals with this, negative right here, it's kind of different from other books, but we're going to use it. Um, they do that. See if you can figure out what I just did. Right. When I switch around the T, that gets rid of this negative, because it makes that negative. No. All we're doing is... What? The MCs... Okay. The, the MCs on the left side of the equation are not the same as the MCs on the right. The MC on the left would be my water that is gaining heat from the aluminum, which is on the right side, okay? And the, the temperatures would not be the same, okay? The original temperature of the water, let's say, is 100 degrees. The original temperature, I'm sorry, the original temperature of the water, I said, was 0 degrees. The original temperature of the aluminum is 100 degrees. Now we could solve for final T because final T is when they meet. Final T is after they've been sitting there for a little while, and that is the same. They come to equilibrium. They come to an equilibrium temperature. That does not mean they have the same number of internal, the same amount of internal energy, or the same um, 
anything else. Okay? Just the same temperature. All right? Now, you can have several of them. You can have more than one thing. Let's let's look Yes. And on the on the loss side, you just flip these around and that handles the the negative. So Yeah. Take a look at number Number 18. Take a look at number 18.